afternoon, good morning, depending on which part of the world you're joining us from today. And welcome to the last session of your path to deep learning. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope all of you learned a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things, a lot of new things from all the workshops. In case you've missed it, don't worry about it. You can still follow up. All the recordings are available on the same links which are which are on screen right now, and you can refer to them. And there's and there uh, and you can follow up with the series. We want to go through some frequently asked questions. First of all, yes, all the sessions will be recorded and they'll be available instantly on the same link once the session ends. You do need a, ba a basic understanding of programming and machine learning. And you also need, uh, just to get started, all you need to do is log in to ibm.biz forward slash your path to deep learning. I'm going to also post, uh, paste that in the chat so that you can get started with the workshop. Uh, Yes, a badge and certificate will be given after the completion of the series. You will need to enroll into a course known as Deep Learning with TensorFlow on cognitiveclass.ai and answer the real questions and the quizzes there. We are covering all the parts of the, uh, all the modules of the, of the course right, within all of these workshops, so it'll be easier for you to answer them. And the Q&A session will be there. Stay tuned. And also, you can join our Slack community, which is ibm.biz forward slash ypdl dash Slack. So you can get your bad and certificate for this series. You can head over to cognitiveclass.ai. Uh, you can log in or sign up using your IBM ID or email. Uh, search for the course Deep Learning with TensorFlow. Uh, enroll into the course. You can complete the review questions and the final quiz, and you'll be able to get your badge and certificate. To join our Slack community, uh, go to ibm.biz forward slash ypdl uh, hyphen Slack. Uh, ypdl and S of Slack is capital. Uh, first of all, you need to log in and sign up or sign up. Uh, and then you will need to click on uh, browse uh, channel and then search for your path to deep learning. And you should be able to go there. Uh, so today we are going to be talking about personalized recommendation engines with TensorFlow. Uh, my name is Fawaz Siddiqui, and I'm a developer advocate in the United Arab Emirates. With me, I have Asna Javed, who is a lead developer advocate located in Pakistan. Uh, with us, we have two guest speakers today. We have Saifullah bin Khati, who is an ML engineer, and Salma Gharabi, who is the founder of Business Innovation located in Morocco. So Asna, uh, over to you. Thank you, Fawaz. Hello, everyone. Uh, super excited to be here today for our last workshop of the series. Hopefully, you enjoyed it, and hopefully, this would be also fun for you all. So uh, let's begin. Um, today, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to have a quick recap of uh, Fawaz. Can you move these slides? All right. Yeah. So before we, we even begin, uh, for those of you who are new, and I saw in the chat some of you are new and joining for the first time, um, to know more about the details of the series and the workshop, you guys can go on the top uh, left corner. You can click there and view more information about the event. <clears throat> For those uh, who are still not following us on Crowdcast, you can go to IBM Developer on the top right and follow us. You can use the chat icon for you know talking to us, asking questions, and uh, letting us know where you're able to follow us or not. You can also ask the questions in Ask a Question bar. Uh, we have some workshop resources available that is in the middle of the screen in the green um, icon. So you guys can click on those and uh, you know follow along. And if you have, again, any questions, uh, you can ask it, ask a question. All right. So moving further, what we're going to do today is um, we would also ask you to uh, let us know about what you thought about the series. Uh, and you know your feedback is really valuable. We would really like to know from you <clears throat> so that we can improve uh, this experience for you and you know present better series and uh, better uh, workshops for you in uh, upcoming events so um, yeah so do let us know uh, what how, how you feel about this and do fill the survey form so moving further um,
we need to uh, firstly quickly go uh, through a recap of TensorFlow. You have already used the TensorFlow in our second workshop, and uh, we're just going to give go through a quick recap. And other than that, we'll be talking about what is Boltzmann machine, just a quick introduction. We'll also talk about Boltzmann machine in one and multiple inputs and after that we'll be you know going to the use cases and then the hands-on obviously so uh with, without further ado let's uh, start with tensorflow tensorflow is uh, basically all of you i'm pretty sure knows about it is a free and open source software library for machine learning and you already have used it in our second workshop. If you haven't, if you're the first one new here, this is your first session. Feel free to you know go and watch those replays and learn more about uh, TensorFlow. And yeah, so TensorFlow it basically allows the developers to um, very quickly and easily develop and deploy uh, powerful machine learning models and applications. And yeah, so that's what TensorFlow is. I'm sure most of you know about it. Do let us know in the chat if you know about TensorFlow. So moving further, let's talk about what is Boltzmann machine, right? So today's, uh, today we're going to use restricted Boltzmann machine. But before that, let's uh, quickly talk about what it is. Uh, Boltzmann machine is uh, nothing more than just a network of symmetrically connected uh, units that look like neuron. Um, and you know it makes uh, sophisticated decisions um, uh, about whether to be on or off at a given time. So Boltzmann machine has a very simple learning algorithm, and it allows uh, to discover uh, interesting features in your data sets, uh, whatever data set you have, uh, and it, that is composed of binary vectors. So that's a very quick, uh, small, and easy way and brief intro of Boltzmann machine. Uh, again, if you want to learn more about it, uh, you can go and you know search on uh, Google about it, or you can obviously ask us, and we would be able to help you out with that. So uh, let's move further. Let's talk about uh, today's topic, that is uh, restricted Boltzmann machine, um, and what it is, how does it work. So uh, a restricted Boltzmann machine is basically a two-layered artificial neural network uh, that learns a probability distribution based on a set of inputs. So it has an input layer and a hidden layer, as you can see on the screen. Um, so yeah, so it is a stochist. It's non-deterministic, uh, which helps solve different combined uh, based pro pro combination based problems. So uh, you can also call it RBM, Restricted Boltzmann Machine. Uh, RBMs can be used to uh, dimensionally reduce, um, classify. Uh, it, it is help for uh, regression, collaborated filtering. It is also help for feature learnings, and it helps you with topic modeling. All right. Um, and as you know, the name suggests, it's called a restricted Boltzmann machine. RBM is a class of Boltzmann machine, obviously. However, you know it is restricted in certain ways. Um, when considering the connections between the input and the hidden layer, as you can see on this on, on the screen, um, yeah, so uh, hidden nodes of the neural network. So it is easier to implement an RBM Boltzmann machine, right? The layers and the nodes within those layers are connected in a one-to-many fashion. Uh, here you can see um, that the input layer is also connecting to different hidden layers. So it's a one-to-many uh, fashion way it is connected, where each node in the input layer is connected to every node in the hidden layer, but no node within each layer is connected. Interesting, right? So um, the restriction allows more streamlined training algorithms than what is generally used in Boltzmann machine. So today, when we'll do the hands-on, you'll be more, uh, you will get it more clear info how this is working out. Um, so the, you know, in in this figure, you can see. Um, that it shows the RBM, and you can see that all the nodes in the input layer are connected to each node in the hidden layer. Uh, and the structure of the neural network itself makes it efficient um, when you're training the neural network, because one input layer can use many hidden layers for training. So multiple RBMs can also be stacked as well. Uh, you can create a um, deep belief network that allows uh, deeper learning of the neural network and incorporate you know, further learnings. 
So let's move further and <clears throat> talk about how does a restricted Boltzmann machine work. Uh, so the first thing would be the multiple inputs, right? Uh, here you guys can see that multiple inputs are basically the first step when you're training a neural network. Uh, the inputs are taken into the input layer, um, multiplied by the weights. Uh, you can see here, um, uh, as you can see on, on the diagram, right? Um, and then it is added to the bias, right? After this, it goes through the activation function. Um, and then the outputs decide whether the hidden stats get um, activated. So uh, the weights in the neural network are in matrix where the numbers of the input nodes in the number uh, of the rows and the number of the hidden nodes is the number of the columns, right? So again, I'm gonna, gonna mention it again. And um, I believe Seth is going to explain this as well. Uh, the, um, uh, the uh, yeah, so the, you know, the weights in the neural network are in the matrix and the number of input nodes is the number of the rows. Uh, so that's important to remember. And the number of hidden nodes is the number of the columns. So as you can see on the screen as well. All right. So uh, the primary hidden nodes, you know, they obtain the vector multiplication of the inputs and is multiplied by the first column of weights before uh, the corresponding bit terms uh, is added to it. So this is how it works uh, with the multiple inputs. Um, now, if we go further, we will talk about a reconstruction. So Recon reconstruction has a very uh, simple and straightforward logic. Uh, you have the activations, which are the inputs at this point, and uh, then pass to the hidden layer and then to the input layer. So uh, input layer. After this, you know, obviously the new biases are obtained and the reconstruction is the new output. Uh, again, when we will do the hands-on, it will be more clear for you uh, what's going on, and Fawaz is going to explain that in detail. So uh, if we go further, let's talk about um, how exactly this you know, learning process is uh, really working, right? So there are two steps, basically, that are happening subsequently, you can, you, you can see. So your first generation activation using the multiple input phase. So first, the first step is obviously the multiple uh, input phase, right? And then the reconstruction is taking place. So when the reconstruction is taking place in an epoch, the main goal is to decrease the reconstruction error, right? So uh, that the weights are then adjusted per iteration according by the algorithm to decrease the reconstruction error. So the, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to decrease the error of the reconstruction, right? Um, and then obviously to that you get you know, you get, get a good prediction and higher accuracy. For example, here in this example, you can see that we're getting a recommendation engine, right? And uh, by decreasing the number of error, you get the maximum in like the match that which is more recommended for you. So this is how it works. Again, I'm mentioning it this because it is important when Fawaz will do the hands-on, it will be more clear to you what exactly is happening. Uh, so now, from now, uh, from right now, I'm going to hand it over to Seth, and he's going to also explain this a little bit more to you for you to understand. So over to you, Seth. And let's just take a minute. Uh, Seth is not on stage; he just needs to be invited. So let's just wait for that, please. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, guys, if you have any questions so far, feel free to ask us. Uh, we are here to help you out with that. If you have any questions about reconstruction or multiple inputs or overall uh, how how this is working out, do ask us in the chat and we are more than happy to answer those. Um, for us, maybe should we quickly bring Salma on before Saf is here? Yeah, we're... Uh... I think we should just go by how the uh, presentation flow is. But uh, we do see some questions, but we're also waiting for Seth to come on stage. So, so yeah, if the right, uh, yeah. IBM developer can invite them. Till then, we can answer some questions for sure. So, sure. Boltzmann machine, is it like CNN? Well, yes, as you saw, that it is something like CNN. And, uh, 
and that's how it's uh, it's giving us the values and how the reconstruction and uh, and uh, and uh, what do you say multi uh, multiple invites is uh, multiple inputs is taking place um, what is the difference between rbm and then mlp uh, you just need to clarify you just need to clarify the step uh, the the question again and we can we can uh, uh, we can discuss this further. Uh, uh, Someone there... asked this. Okay. Hello, Mr. Fawaz. Am I audible to you guys? Yep, sounds good. Safe. Over to you now. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mr. Fawaz. Hello, everyone. This is Safi Labin Khaki. As this sports, as this episode's guest speaker, speaking live from Nas University, Islamabad. I'm basically a computer science student here in my senior year where I'm working with RBMs for collaborating filtering. I have brought some interesting concepts with me for all of you regarding RBMs. Continuing from Mepasna's point, firstly, I will show you the overall working of RBMs in one picture. Uh, Saif, I'm so sorry, but you need to refresh. I'm so sorry, but you need to refresh because we can't hear you. Saif, please refresh. Okay, he's just refreshing, probably some internet connections. Uh, let's just wait for that. Well, uh, we hear someone saying that he's singing. Well, we like to keep you guys entertained as well. You know, it's really important to make uh, deep learning more fun than being it boring. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, can you all tell us, uh, is this your first session, second session, third uh, or fourth? So have you attended all of them or this is the first time you're joining us? Do tell us about your experience in the chat while Seth is joining back. Uh, hello, Mr. Fawaz. Can we check it now? I have changed my network. Loud and clear. Loud and clear, mate. You can. You can. Okay. Start. Perfect. Ahead, perfect. I'm really sorry, guys. This is actually this actually happens sometimes with the bandwidth issues. So I'll just continue from where I left off. So first of all, we have our data set in this image. You can see it on the left side. We have our data set with all the ratings given by many users to different movies. We feed this data to the model per individual to fulfill the equation given by MAMAS now in the slides. So multiplying the inputs with the weights and adding up the bias. The weights of the Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You're having bandwidth issues again. Uh, no, we can't hear you. I think you need to refresh once more.
Uh, hello, Mr. Favats. Yes, yeah, yeah, sounds good. Okay. Continue, please. Okay, okay. So, we're well, continuing. After we have calculated the activation values in the first step, the generative step is initiated that runs backwards and creates the data points with these activation values. These newly generated data points are called generated rating, as you can see on the most right side. So this rating is then compared with the inputted rating to find the reconstruction error, which is the cost parameter of this model actually, as we have a cost parameter in every model, which we need to decrease to make Safe, we lost you again. Safe, uh, we lost you again, Safe. I need you to refresh again. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we we're just waiting for Seth to join once more. Um, there's uh, there's just some connectivity issue. Just give it, just bear with us for a second and then we can continue. Anyways, in the meantime, do you have any questions and uh, you can, uh, we can answer. By the way, I'm really excited for today's hands-on workshop. Oh, Seth is back. Okay, hello. This is my this is this is my last backup. This is my last backup network actually. So we're gonna use it now. <laughs> Let me tell tell me if I am audible to you guys. You are Seth. Continue, please. Okay, perfect. I'm finally. I'm really sorry, and I have a proper bandwidth right now and if it happens then i will suggest mr Fawaz to continue on without me so we do not affect the content of the workshop so finally we'll just continue where i left uh i will Okay, I think we lost Seth once more. So, Seth, I believe we lost you. Uh, I'm gonna continue. It's okay. I completely understand uh, internet can be a big issue. But anyways, what Seth was trying to say is that based on the multiple inputs on the right side, um, uh, just to help him on on, on the uh, help uh, help him out here. On the multiple uh, multiple inputs on the right side, we have two uh, two data sets which take place here. We have the uh, movies and the ratings, and they take into the inputs. They have their hidden bias, and uh, and they they perform the uh, they there's a sigmoid activation function which goes back to this, and then uh, to the reconstruction area, where we generate the ratings and and also have to uh, and then we find a difference between these two which is known as the reconstruction error we'll be seeing that in the in the in the hands-on session and the different uh, and we need to ensure that this error is uh, is low we need to decrease this error uh, on the other hand Seth will be answering any questions which you have in the chat so yeah that's there um, now there are multiple uh, things that take place within <clears throat> within a uh, within an RBM, there's collaborating fil filtering, which is based on each person or for each movie. Uh, there are two layers, right? There's the visible layer and the hi hidden layer, and there's a deep belief network, which which is also in place to ensure that that our predictions are made uh, made accordingly to that. Um, there's a sigmoid activation function 
in uh, in this uh, in this aspect, right? Which is basically, you know, the in uh, the outputs are being multiplied with this activation function to give us a uh, give us a give us an output, right? And from there we go to uh, a generative model and then an unsupervised and it's a unsupervised learning since there's no labels there's no output layer it, it it sends the output through the input layers as we mentioned in the previous slide now um there are multiple use cases for rbms first of all what we'll be doing today is movie recommendation system and uh and that's for there but there's also feature learning and also topic modeling so these are some use cases which you all can even work on after the workshop is done and we've seen many people actually build up on these use cases as well so uh thank you seth uh really sorry that the, you were having internet issues no worries there's always a next time um now we have our second speaker uh second guest speaker which is salma garabi She's the founder of Business Innovation in Morocco, and she just wants to spread uh, spread some nice words for the developers out there and how she can help uh, growing developers. Salma, over to you. So, hey everyone, I hope you are uh, like capable to hear me very well. We can hear you, Salma, go ahead. Yeah, great. So, I am Salma Rabi, founder of Business Innovation in Casablanca, Morocco. I'm so happy to be here with you, especially that's to be capable to, to uh, join the EBM path, deep learning path, and also to partner with them to, to spread the word around in the, North, in the Middle East and North Africa, and especially in Morocco. So, uh, what I was uh, what I was aiming to say about this is that we want to just keep going the great work that IBM had uh, provided to us by bringing this path, and we want to build the community of data science, com uh, machine learning, and IE developer here in Morocco, in North Africa also, and also Middle East. So if you want to join and be on the board and be uh, aiming to help and to construct everything, just drop me a mail in data science community at businessinnovation.mr i'm gonna let the the mail in the chat and i will be more than happy to connect you and to be capable to 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 just build the community because when we are aiming to just work together and all there is a lot of people who knows each other do you know someone who is working in data science but we don't have the community who is really structured and we want to do that and I'm so happy because IBM is uh, bringing this path and we are capable to just know the last technology that's happening and especially with all this situation. So yeah, thank you for everything and uh, I hope you enjoy all the paths. Back to you, Fawai. Thank you so much, Salma. Uh, do drop in the email. We do see people join different communities. It's really there to help you expand um, expand your reach and expand your network. So thank you so much for contributing to that, Salma. So uh, let's talk about what's happening today. Uh, so today in the workshop, we, we, we are going to build a movie recommendation system using restricted Boltzmann machine, which is RBM and TensorFlow. You'll be using a sigmoid and a ReLU function, right? And that will help us uh, that will help us to provide the recommendation so let's talk about our data today so we are using the group lens movie data movie data and it has three files in it right there's uh, the user file which basically giving us uh, uh, which is basically giving us the users in their database uh, and then there's a mu movies file which allows us to give uh, which is giving us the movies, and then there's the ratings file. So, which is basically giving us the ratings. So the ratings, how they're linked to each other is that there's an ID uh, for both of the data sets. And they're basically, it's telling us that uh, movie number one, which is basically Toy Story, which was in 99.5, uh, one of my favorite movies, has got these ratings. So we'll be cleaning this data, normalizing this data, and then further ahead, going with uh, and going with doing our hands-on workshop on these two data sets to get the final recommendation for a particular user. So uh, before we start the workshop, uh, excuse me, 
Okay, so before we start the workshop, uh, there are three steps uh, which you need to do. In case, um, since you, you would like to follow us on the workshop, I would like you to go ahead and sign up or log in into your existing account. So if you have a if you have an existing account, please log in through that. If you don't, please sign up using this link, which is ibm.biz forward slash your path to deep learning. In case you get lost in the workshop at any point, uh, there is a, a GitHub repository, and it's uh, a, you can get, get that through going by uh, going to ypdl-rbm. Uh, so let me paste that link here. And you can find the slides already in there. So I'm just going to wait for around three minutes for everyone to sign up or log in, and then we will continue with our hands-on session. In the meantime, if you have any questions, um, I would be very happy to answer them. So I saw that a lot of you had joined for the first time. So guys, please do a sign up for IBM Cloud. If you already have the account, just sign in and follow us along for the workshop. Um, this will really help you to enhance your skills. And um, we would really like you to learn something out of it. And as I said, we can build more recommendation engines for other things as well. So by the time you're signing up, uh, let's go through the GitHub repository. Let me just stop sharing for a second uh, and ensure that I'm sharing the right screens here. And one thing what we'll be doing is that uh, as we are going by the steps, we uh, so there's step one, step two, step three, um, and we'd like to know which step are you in. So Riyadh, don't worry about the data. Uh, I'll be explaining it once more. Uh, that's fine. Uh, right now, the main task is to sign up or log in into IBM Cloud, right? So that we can start with the workshop. So let me just share my screen uh, once more. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. There we go. OK, let me also zoom in so that everyone has the right uh, 25, OK, and also zoom in here. So this is our GitHub repository. Uh, and all the steps are defined here. Uh, the notebook is also here. The data is also here. Uh, and if you're lost at any point in the workshop, refer to this GitHub repository. All the steps are defined here. So I'm going to paste the link in the chat at the same time. And uh, we are explaining the same. Uh, same uh, uh, same, uh, <clears throat> we're explaining the same concepts. And let me zoom in more. You're having issues with that. Right. So we're explaining the same concepts here uh, as we explained the work uh, in the in the session. And there's a let's get started session, a section here. And through there, we are going to sign up into IBM Cloud, going to create a Watson Studio ser service. If you have one already, use that. And we're going to create a workshop, and we're also going to create a cloud object story. So I'm going to take you through these steps. But as we go and go through these steps, we need to. Uh, I'm going to say if you're if you're done with step one, you need to write one in the chat so that I know that you're following along. So let's start with our steps. So I believe by this time, um, Asna, you have something to add. Okay. Yeah, for while I see there are already responses in the chat and they are already on step one. So they click out the ear uh, Guys, if you all have signed in and signed up for IBM Cloud and you're on the dashboard, please type one in the chat. If you see the screen in front of you, uh, uh, let's. Uh, that means that you are logged in. And that would be amazing to start with. So yes, we'll wait for a lot of ones. So All right. let's move on to step two. All right. So step two is to create the Watson Studio service. Now, if you have a Watson Studio service, which is already deployed, not uh, do not create it. 
So that's completely fine if you have an old one from the previous workshops. But for those of you, as we know that uh, you're new, uh, we are going to create a Watson Studio service. So in the search bar on the top, uh, top, uh, on top of the of the navigation pane, just write Watson Studio. And you will see the service in the catalog results. So click on Watson Studio. And you will select your location as uh, Dallas, uh, Dallas US South. And you're going to select the live plan. And once you go at the bottom, if you want, you can rename your service. Uh, for me, I already have a service, so I won't be redeploying this. but but you can recreate the service uh, and uh, you can create the service and rename it as you like, and then just click on create. So this is step two. So if you're done with creating Watson Studio, please write two in the chat. Uh, yes, it, it's preferable to have Dallas for this workshop. So again, I will re repeat step two. Uh, you need to write Watson Studio in the chat and the in the search bar, sorry, excuse me. And you will need to select Watson Studio. You will need to select Dallas US South, select the light plan and rename your service if you feel like, click on create. So if you're done with this step, write two in the chat. All right, I see many twos now. So that's perfect. Let's continue then. Uh, now, the second service which we'll, we will be creating is going to be is going to be our step three, which is the object storage. So what you're going to do, just like how you created a Watson Studio service, you're going to click on search resources or the search bar, and write object storage this step is for new users yes if you are not a new user if you have the services deployed before please use those uh, so once you write object storage you will see object storage in the in the search results and under catalog results so you're going to click on that and you will select the light plan and you will rename your service if you like and you can click on create so if you're done with creating the object storage you should write three in the chat because this is step three for us All right, I'm seeing many threes. Perfect, that's amazing. So to create the second service which you need to create for this workshop is object storage. You're gonna click on the search bar and you're gonna write object storage. And you're gonna wait for the catalog results to pop up. You're gonna go to catalog results and you're going to select object storage. You will be taken to this page, create a light service, rename it if you want to, and click on create. 
And that is step three. So if you're done with step three, uh, write three in the chat. And if you're lost, uh, please refer back to the GitHub notebook, uh, GitHub repository, for which I've pasted the link before and I'll repaste it once more. All right. All right now. So, uh, so if you're done with this step, write three in the chat, and then we can continue. I see some threes already. Just making sure um, you can, uh, Deepak. You can keep it default. Keep it in the default resource group, please. So is everyone done with step three? If you are, last call, write three in the chat. If there's already in storage, please don't delete it. Use the same one. It's OK. You can use an existing storage. This is for the new users who are coming into the workshop. All right, final call one, final call two, final call three. All right, so what we're going to do now is that you've created your Watson Studio service. I have one already, so I'm going to access that. So how do you access that service is you're going to click on the search bar again. You're going to search for Watson Studio. Uh, for me, my service name is Watson Studio Standard because that's the service which I use. Um, but search for your Watson Studio service. You can also alternatively go to the resource group and a resource page and get it, but better to just search for it here, right? Once you search for the service, you will see it here in re under resource results. Uh, it's tagged with my nickname. So you're going to click on that and you're going to come to this page. So this is step number four. So if you're on this page, page you need to write number four in the chat. Perfect. So if everyone is on this page, write number four. So again, I will repeat it once more. So you've named your service. You have Watson Studio created. What you need to do is you need to search for Watson for your service name. OK. and you should see it under resource results. And you're going to click on that. You'll be taken to this page. Make sure if you're at this page, this is step number four. And you would need to write number four in the chat. All right. Okay, we have a lot of fours. So we will just wait for one more minute. Is anyone having any difficulties? All right. So uh, going once, going twice, and the next step is to click on Get Started. 
So you're going to click on Get Started, and you're going to see such sort of a screen. Now, if you're being asked for details, yes, you need to provide it. If you want, if if it's asking for a company name, for those of you who recreated the service, provide your company name. If you are a freelancer, uh, uh, write freelancer. If you're a student, you can write student. It's um, it's uh, it's really your call, right? So uh, once you are on this page, uh, you need to write number five. So what you need to do as you are on this page, you need to click on Get Started and then it will come to this page. So once you are on this page, write number five in the chat. For some of you, it might take some time, that's fine. I see a lot of fights coming in. So repeating it once more, once you are on this page where you are at the resource list and you see your service, you need to click on get, uh, get started and it will take you to, uh, to IBM Cloud Pack for data. You will see the screen. Once you see this screen, this is step number five. So you need to reply by five in the chat with this. All right. I will wait for one more minute. going once going twice all right you're going to move on now so what you need to do now is create a project so you're going to click on under work with data there's create a project so you're going to select this uh this blue text this hyperlink and you are going to create an empty project so Larry, uh, what you're going to do is once you're at this page, you're going to click on get started. You will see this link, uh, you will see this page, I'm sorry. And you're going to click under work with data, you're going to see create a project. You're going to create a project and you're going to create an empty project. So this is step number six. If you are on step number six, if you're done with, if you're at this page, write number six. Perfect. Some people know how to create a project now. Happy. All right, so I'm going to create my project. So what you're going to do, your cloud object storage may be selected automatically. Uh, for me, I have a lot of them, so I'm just going to find mine. Yep, I found mine. And you're going to name your project uh, our RBM, uh, Movie Recommendation. That's really up to you. I'm just going to call it RBM Movie. And you're going to click on Create. So what you're going to do is select your cloud object storage. You're going to name your project and you're going to click on create. So this is step number seven. You need to create a project. So give your project a name. Give your project, uh, select the cloud object storage. It may be automatically selected for you as well. And click on create. This is step number seven. So if you're done with step number seven, write that in the chat. All right, so 
we are almost there with starting our workshop, right? Our main cake of the workshop. So this is uh, uh, IBM Cloud Pack for data. And this is your central hub for all your data science needs. You can import assets such as data. You, can, you have different environments to work on. This is just for information for everyone. You have different environments uh, for, for your usage here. Uh, you also you can also uh, have jobs which con which are conducted based on multiple aspects which you're working on. Uh, there's access control if you want any collaborators, and then there's also settings. Uh, and then there's also settings. Um, Hamza, just refresh, and you should be good to go. All right. So we want to. You'll be at this page right now. So if you're at this page, this is step number eight. So if you are at this page, this is step number eight. Uh, and then we will continue. I like that pun. I like that. All right. So what we're going to do next is uh, it's going to go to the assets tab. Once you're at the assets tab and you need to click on add to project, which is on the top right, uh, top right. You're going to select notebook. So going to repeat it again. You're going to go to the assets tab and click on add to project. You're going to click on notebook. Once you're at this page, this is step number nine. All right. In this page, I see some people are already nine there. So yes. A fast nine is there, but <laughs> but uh, you're gonna select from URL on this page, okay? You're gonna give your name notebook a name. So I'm gonna call it RBM Movie Notebook. This next step is very important. So you need to import your notebook. So in the GitHub repository, I've given a link, which is right here. So I will paste this in the chat, okay? Uh, I will paste this in the chat. You need to add this link. It should be ending with .ipynb in the, uh, in the section here, which is the notebook URL. So it's in the chat as well. Uh, I would really like you guys to do that, please. And this is step number 10. So if you're done adding the name and adding the notebook URL, this is step number 10. So the notebook URL again is this. It's even in the GitHub repository. but you need to add it here. And then that is step number 10. So step number 10 in the chat, if uh, if you're done, if you're done pasting this and, and yeah, we can continue from there. Waiting for some more fast ends and then we can continue.
Hamza, uh, clear your cookies. Uh, Hamza, clear your cookies and then try again. Just follow up according to that, please. It happens at times. All right. So again, one last time, you need to give uh, you need to select from URL, give your notebook a name, add the notebook URL. And the notebook URL is now in the chat once more. All right, so the next step is obviously, uh, uh, it's obviously to create the notebook. So you're gonna click on create. This is step number 11. So once you click create, and once you see the notebook, that is step number 11. And then this is the main part. So let's wait for it to load. All right, so once you see the notebook, uh, step number 11 in the chat, and then we can continue from there. Amazing. How we get to the real workshop. All right. So uh, once again, if you're at this page, step number 11, so that we know everyone's on the same page. And I will wait two more minutes for this so that we know that everyone's there. All right, 11 going once, 11 going twice, and step number 11, that's it. All right, so this is the notebook, and uh, and it's basically acquiring data from group lens, and it contains movie and movie ratings. So to download the data, you were, you're going to click on the first cell, and you're going to click on run. So that's going to download the data, which is hosted in a GitHub repository. It's going to take uh, a second, but this is the first part. So once you're done with this cell, uh, so that I'm assured that you have the data with you at this point, we can continue. So this is step number 12. Once you see the first cell complete. Perfect. So I see it's working for all of you. So now we're going to import our libraries and you're going to click on import. So we're importing TensorFlow. Uh, that's a given. NumPy, 
uh, pandas and matplotlib. So you're going to run this to make sure that all the imports are done and you should be good to go. And at this point, you're going to load the data. So we're going to load the movies data set. And what's happening here is that, remember I showed you the data a while back to show you how it's done. Uh, we are going to, we have a separator here and we're going to use that separator, which is two colons and, uh, and basically to get the data out of it. So we're going to run that cell and you're going to see all the, all the amazing movies here. And at the same time, we're going to run the ratings one. So if you see, <clears throat> if you see an output for this, this is step number 13. So if you see the movies and the ratings, this is step number 13, which assures me uh, that everyone is on the right path. They have the data loaded. And then we can go ahead and we can start this. So step number 13 is when you see these two outputs. Perfect. So we can continue now. So uh, follow up with me as I'm running the cells, and I will be explaining them as we're going. So at this point, we are going to get the uh, get the movie ID, titles, and the genre. And once we run that, we're going to see the movie ID and the genre. Uh, we are also going to get the user ID, movie ID rating, and the timestamp from the ratings uh, file. So you're going to run that, and we're going to get that as well. So we see that the user ID is one, the movie ID is there, the rating is there, and the timestamp is there of the person. Now, in the restricted Boltzmann machine model, it has two layers, basically, from one of which is visible, and the other one is a hidden layer. And after passing the input to the RBM, uh, we'll, we'll use the hidden layer to learn its uh, uh, learn its features, and these features are going to reconstruct and predict the movies that uh, uh, predict the recommendations for the movies that haven't been watched. So first of all, what is the first thing that you do when we start a uh, when we start a data science project or any project is to format the data. So we're going to run this cell, which is lend movies underscore df, to see what is the to see how many movies uh, we have and see the movie IDs that correspond with that value. And we're going to also see the user rating.df where we see that, okay, there are, are a lot of non values and we are going to normalize this data. So how do we normalize it? We have a TRX, uh, we have a, <clears throat> we are going to fill the values for, for any, Nan value which you see there, which means it doesn't exist, and we are going to give it a. Uh, we are going to normalize it. So once you run it, you're going to see a very different output. As you can see, we've added a zero point to into the value itself in the array itself. So, uh, if you are on this step, right, step number fourteen, because we're going to set the model parameters on in the next sections. All right. So this is where we start the fun part. We build the, the TensorFlow model. Okay, we have around 20 hidden units. Remember when Asna said hidden units and the visible units, columns, rows, and everything? So that's what we're doing. We're, we're setting up the hidden units here. And, uh, and we're going to set up the variable. So we're going to find the number of unique movies. We're going to find the number of features we're, which we're going to learn. And we are going to uh, we are going to create a weight, which is basically uh, which is basically the number of uh, hidden units and uh, and visible units and hidden units uh, to continue. So, Mariam, we need to normalize the data to ensure that there are no null values, and we need to always mitigate them. That's the first step of any data science project. May that be deep learning, machine learning anything of such sort, but that needs to be done. So that's why we have to normalize the data itself. So, uh, and we need to make sure it's balanced at the same time. So once you run this, you're gonna set up the hidden values, right? And, and at the same time, uh, what you are going to do, then we move on to creating a visible hidden layer and its settings with the activation function. We'll be using two, uh, ReLU and Sigmoid. So we're going to, start with this and we, we we see the shape of the data at this point so we see that there is no non-zero value 
and uh, and we this is the phase one that we start. It's the input processing. So we are defining a function which has the edge zero, zero probability and the edge zero state. And we are going to, we are sending it through a sigmoid function and a ReLU function. Uh, when it comes to the probabilities, we're gonna find the probabilities of the hidden units. And we're going to sample it, sample edge given X, right? And we are going to return the state value here. Uh, so we're gonna print that. We're gonna see the first 15 hidden states. And then we're also going to see the reconstructed output here using uh, using sigmoid and and uh, and uh, ReLU again. And we're gonna get the V1 state, right? So, and we're gonna see an output here, obviously. So let's run this cell and see what, what do we have. Uh, we have a question. When do we ever data cleaning will be zero, right? Yes, exactly, Hamza. So yeah. Uh, so we see what is the state. We see the state and the shape of the data itself. Okay. The next step is to actually set the error function. So we need to make sure that there, we deal with the error, right? So, so we see what is the error rate right now. It's 0 0.4859 stuff. So this is the next part. This is where we actually start training our model. We are going to use five epochs, basically five iterations, with a batch size of 500, giving 12 batches. And after training, we all we will also print out an, a, a graph, right? So we have an alpha value, we have the weights, we have the errors. Uh, we are also going to create the data sets for our training. And as you can see in this state, we are setting up the epochs, we are, we are setting up our alphas, uh, the hidden layers, and all of these things. So let's not wait for the training and let's run it. So once you run this cell, you will see it running and it's going to start training. So this is just epoch one of sample 12. So this, uh, so this is going to happen for a while. It's gonna take five iterations, but it doesn't take more than around two to three minutes. So let's, con uh, let's wait for that to finish. But you are doing something really amazing here is is to as as uh, as our guest speaker Seth mentioned, we need to decrease the reconstruction error. So we started with a reconstruction error of zero point four five eight two eight. Then it started decreasing. So these and so these uh, these va uh, these values keep on decreasing and increasing as we go. But we will see uh, what we will see is the is this error will be at a very short number by the time we end it. So I got a question in the chat. What is K and alpha? Those are variables. Those are variables in, of the range within, 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 our, uh, within our experiment. And alpha is basically the alpha of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, if you refer back to our presentation, it's, uh, it's basically the added weight. So yeah. So uh, we are already on fifth uh, uh, on the fifth epoch, and as you can see, the reconstruction error is uh, is going down. And we have finally printed a graph to see how much error was there. So we realized that per epoch we had such and such error, and we are we are there right at this point. So uh, if you are done with this step, this is going to be step number fifteen if your model is done training, because I don't want to go ahead once everyone's done, and before everyone's done training. So as you see, as we grew, uh, as we went through, there was an erratic behavior in the reconstruction error. This is very normal, right? Because you're taking it in step, to the iterations depends upon the problem statement. What do we have to do with the null values? The null values need to be mitigated. Deepak, uh, we just answered that a while back. But you cannot have null values. You can replace them with zeros. That works as well. But that this nan, which we see here, is not good. Right. That's why we mitigated them by adding by uh, by by filling them fill na to zero all right so so yeah 
now we are done with the training. I believe everyone is done. So step number 15, if you're done with the training and you see this graph, which is basically telling us the error per epoch. Going once, going twice. Is everyone on step 15? Is anyone behind? And going thrice. All right. So we're going to go to the recommendation part. So you've done the you've you've normalized your data, you've done the training. So now how do I use it, right? So you're going to create a mock user. So you're going to call it mock user ID, and you're you can change the number if you want to. Uh, and you can click on run. It's going to set that up. It's going to select the input user. So it's going to input the user based on, uh, based on it's going to convert the user into tensor and it's going to give you the mock user ID minus one in float, uh, float 32. And you're going to see the shape of it. So you see that we get the, the tensor shape and we are going to test this by, by a visible units as well to see what movies are there. So, uh, <clears throat> so we see that. Now we are going to feed in the user and reconstruct uh, and the reconstructing input that we've got, right? So we're going to run this. It's just a function, but basically what's happening here is that remember, as we mentioned in start, the multiple inputs and then the reconstruction. This is how the end uh, and output looks like. And then we are going to see these scored movies, and and the and we are going to sort them according to the recommendation score. So we can list the first 20 recommended movies for our mock users by sorting it by their records given by our model. So once we run this, we see what movies are recommended. So our uh, our user loves Star Wars. It's uh, it's 92, but doesn't like Back to the Future, Men in Black, The Terminator, and all of these movies, all of the other movies. So how do uh, so how to recommend the movie, how to recommend the movies the user hasn't watched. These are from his watch movies or their watch movies, sorry. And we're going to create a mock data frame by the user ID. And we are going to, uh, for the same user that we had created in the top, which is uh, user 215, we see they've watched these movies and given these ratings to them. And then we are going to merge these movies by ratings, uh, by the ratings and through movie ID. So let's run that. And that's merged. Now let's have a look at the first 20 rows. So as you can see, the user hasn't watched some movies. So yeah, and they haven't watched Back to the Future. So they have a recommendation score of uh, 0 0.49. Then they, there are other movies that they haven't watched, but these are the recommendations that they've been given. So they'd be more, more than happy to actually watch something which is closer to what they've watched before. This could be either Back to the Future. This could be Men in Black. They're very, uh, uh, it's very probable that they will watch these movies. And this is how we've actually, in a matter of, uh, in a matter of time, we've created a movie recommendation system. And this has various use cases. Many streaming services use these systems to actually, um, to actually tell people on what to watch, tell their users to what to watch. And thus, the, uh, so these NAN values are basically not, uh, when, are not what you think it is. So these NAN values highlight that the person hasn't watched the movies. But if you see for Star Wars, uh, The Return of Jedi, the user has watched it, given a rating five, and they've given a time stamp. But they haven't watched this. So once they watch this, obviously this table will be updated accordingly, and it will give another set of values for them. So that's one thing to be taken care of here. This was for you, Hamza. So output of the last cell is, uh, it should be different for all of you. Yes, you can share the what's the top movie uh, shared by your, 
and watched by your user, you know, just as an exercise. But but basically, that's what's been happening here. So uh, as you, uh, this is the end of the tutorial, by the way. So you can try to change the parameters. So what parameters can you change here? You can change the user ID. Maybe you can make it in and them into 200. You can try and change the number of epochs. So this number is something very, uh, it, as, as there are more epochs, the better the model will train. So we just did it in five, but you can go for 10. You can try out different numbers after this workshop and you can, you can, you can share your results in the chat or reach out to us if you have any doubts, but yeah. But this is basically what the, are the things that you can change. And I hope that this um, uh, this hands-on session helped you with understanding how to build a recommendation engine and what we've just built. So uh, just a summary, uh, we've Im implemented a restricted Bol Boltzmann machine. This is known as a collaborative filtering use case to recommend movies to our users. We normalize the data. We added reconstruction algorithms. We use the sigmoid and ReLU activation functions, trained the model on five epochs, created a, a mock user, merged our data, and found the recommendations for them. Some of the useful resources which you can, uh, which you can uh, read more about is basically, you can try out the TensorFlow Playground. You can, uh, you can check out the course to our neural networks deep learning course. There's also Deep Learning Meets Physics. It's a really interesting uh, interesting blog about using RBMs in, in, in the field of physics, if anyone's interested in that. Um, last but not the least, uh, head over to cognitiveclass.ai, sign up with your IBM ID or email, uh, search for the course Deep Learning with TensorFlow, enroll into the course, complete the review questions, get your badge and certificate for all the uh, you know, for all the hard work you have done with us over the past past few weeks with the the series. Thank you so much for hang, uh, hanging around and really attending the workshops. For those of you who've missed, don't worry. You can always watch the replays. We'll be sharing the link in the in the follow up email. And also, once you've got got your badge, you can actually use the hashtag Your Path to Deep Learning to share it with us. We'll be having we'll be we'll be watching out. And last but not least, a big thank you to our partners who've really made this work, uh, this series um, happen. Uh, Phi Science, Open UAE, Business Innovation, Dubai Data Science, Exordium, and Arab uh, Women in Computing. And thank you so much for joining us today. This was the last session of the series. We are we we had an amazing feedback. We really enjoyed this. All of us in, on the team. Uh, with me, I had Asna Javid today, and my name is Fawa Siddiqui, and really had fun having you here. Please do fill up the survey. We'll be, we'll be looking forward to how we can actually help you more. And yes, there will always be sessions in the future where you will be able to meet us. Thank you, have a great day, stay safe, keep your family safe, and see you around.